embossing powders. We have a collection of seven of them at Tailored Expressions, and this is the um, color chart that I made up. Now, I was thinking this was on our website uh, in our downloads section. I'm actually not sure that's the case anymore. We have since added one additional color of embossing powder, and so we need to come up with another color chart that you guys can download. This particular one may be on there. I didn't get a chance to double check that before I started the live today. So if you find it in the download section, you'll have to be logged into your account and then you can search download. It may be up there. And if it's not, we will get it put up there soon along with a box added for our seventh color of embossing powder. So at Tailored Expressions, we have, let's see if you can see those pretty well. We have rose gold, gold, silver, clear, black, and white. And then the one that's not shown here is called diamond. And that is a clear embossing powder with sparkles in, in the powder itself. So that'll give you a clear yet sparkly effect. So all of our embossing powders, except for the rose gold, are fine detail embossing powders. So that means that they are very fine um, flecks of that powder, and that's just going to allow you to get even more intricate with your images. And there are other embossing powders out there. If I do caution you, if they don't say fine detail, um, then they are probably a little bit more coarse. And for some applications, you probably want a coarse embossing powder. However, when I'm stamping sentiments, um, detailed images, almost everything, I will want a fine detail embossing powder. So that's what we have. And then I showed you the jar here. It is one ounce of embossing powder. And we put the lids on the sides and the top. I don't know how you guys store your embossing powder, but I store mine in a drawer and being able to see and read what color I'm grabbing is so helpful. So that's why we put the, the um, labels on the lid as well as the side. And I know a lot of you probably store your embossing powders in little Tupperwares perhaps, which I love that option too. Um, actually in my home craft room, that's how I store my embossing powders and here at the office, I have them in a drawer with the lids facing up so I can see the colors. Um, okay, so let's move on to actually doing something with the embossing powder. And if you have not heat embossed before, it's really not hard at all. Uh, there are a few products that you will likely want to invest in in order to make your experience with the embossing powder even better. So what I'm going to do here is start with, I'm gonna use the Pennant Parade stamp because um, I just haven't, I didn't get a chance to use it yet for this new release of products that just happened on Tuesday. And this is the one stamp that I have not personally used yet. So we're gonna use this. Um, and I am just going to actually take my paper out of here and do what I showed you guys in the last video. And I'm going to stamp my image down onto the grid paper of my Misty. And then we'll line up the cardstock from there. So last video, I did also mention that I am using the new Misty. So this lovely um, item tool is coming out. I believe the new Misty is going to be available like the first week of June and we will have it at Tailored Expression so you can get it here. A lot of people were asking what's the difference between this Misty and the um, previous one. I believe they're calling this the Misty 2.0 so they've made a lot of upgrades. Um, Ileana has done a fabulous job upgrading this 2.0 version. So if you're curious the differences are um, just from a sturdy standpoint, they now have metal hinges. So that is um, really an upgrade from the plastic hinges that were there before. There's also a spot off to the side here. I don't have my bar magnet with me, but there's a spot where your bar magnet fits. So the, the magnet uh, base extends over into this area and you can store your magnet over there without getting in the way of your project. It also has, this is, probably my favorite feature. It has a beveled lid here. 
Now, for those of you crafters that do the dip nails, I had such a hard time getting underneath that lid to lift it up. And now there's this bevel here so that you can just, it's kind of like a lip and you can just easily lift it and place it back down. And then the other thing that uh, she did here is on the previous Misty, the rulers were actually stickers and now they are completely etched. So it's a piece of plastic that is etched so I can actually get my fingernail in there. So no more stickers on the side, they are etched rulers here on the three sides of the Misty. So the other thing that I kind of like about this Misty with the metal hinges is it actually stays open. You can see here, I just have it propped up. A lot of times I'll grab my lid and then I'll accidentally drop it and it just flops onto my project when I'm not ready. Um, so I appreciate that this one has a little bit more, um, I guess it's not quite as, uh, what word am I looking for? I don't know, it just doesn't close quite as easily. So it can stand open like this until you're ready to place it down. Let me know if you have any questions about the new Misty and I can try to get to those as I'm stamping here. But I will get started now with this stamp. I like to stamp it in the black on the grid line so that I can make sure my cardstock is perfectly lined up where I want it, that I'm gonna get the full image. And then because this image does not go all the way to the bottom, we left some space down there for a sentiment so I can actually use my magnet to hold that in place. And before I stamp this with my Versamark, I need to wash my stamp. So I have my bottle of Stamper Spritz, which is our stamp cleaner, and my super, super dirty cleaning cloth, which I need to just get this thing home. Our cleaning cloths are um, machine washable, so you can certainly wash them, but guess who hasn't? That would be me. Um, you can wash them though, so just stick them in the washing machine. I'm not sure I would do that I would maybe do it with you know a load of towels you don't care about or by itself because you are washing ink off of it so I wouldn't want that to ruin any clothes or any nice things that you have that you're washing so either wash it separately or with you know some old garage towels or something okay so I've washed the stamp and it is ready for the Versamark now but before we do that one of the most important things I can tell you with embossing is you need a powder tool. So this is the one that I use, and this is what you're going to condition your cardstock with before you stamp with the Versamark. So this is going to keep the embossing powder, all of those fine bits from sticking to the places on your paper that you don't want them to stick. So I just take the lid off here, and one of the things you're not gonna get in my videos is the sound of me actually pouncing on my paper. I actually do give it a good covering. So I'm not just lightly, you know, going over the paper. I'm pouncing on that lid to get just enough of that powder out. And then after I have pounced on the paper and the powder is sitting there, then I will kind of take and just lightly go over it to make sure I've hit all the areas of the paper. And I wanted to show you guys what a new tool, brand new tool looks like. So you see that lid there and you see mine? It's not pretty. So I have found that it does work best to pounce on it, but you're gonna end up with this kind of scraggly, funny troll hair looking thing. So um, don't worry about that. At least from my perspective, I am, uh, I'm okay with it looking like this as long as it's doing what I want it to do. So yours might not look like that forever um, if, you're, if you're doing this pouncing on it like this. Okay, so once we have our powder tool conditioned our cardstock, I'm going to take my Versamark. This is a watermark stamp pad. I know there are several different brands of these on the market. I have always had such good luck with Versamark myself that I have chosen not to private label a watermark stamp pad myself, um, but they are all very good quality, I'm sure. I This is just my preference here. Um, we do have a mini Versamark pad and we also sell a re-inker. So occasionally you may need to re-ink your pad. So I'm just going to stamp that, close the lid and stamp that down then. 
And sometimes I will stamp it twice. This looks like I did pretty good, but just in case, I'll just lightly stamp that or ink that again with the Versamark and stamp that down. Okay. So now we can take this out of the Misty. And I have here just a piece of kind of typing paper. Now I know there are other products on the market as well. They have trays. I think a lot of places call them tidy trays um, that you can dump your embossing powder into and then funnel it back into your jar. I'll just be very honest. I just can never seem to find my tools right when I need them. So more often than not, I just grab a piece of typing paper and it works fine for me. So I take and uh, we're gonna do this image in black and I'm just going to lightly dust the top of the image. This is typically how I do it. I put just a little bit of powder on the top and then I angle my paper so that it comes off there on the sides. And if there's any spots that I missed, then I go back and dump the powder over the top again. And I'm just tap, tap, tapping on the side, sometimes tapping it on a hard surface. Sometimes I will tap it on my garbage can, just right on the side of the garbage can to get those extra flyaway bits off. And then I will um, not have to worry about it getting on my work surface. It's just right into the garbage can. Okay, so then I'm gonna put the excess powder back in here. And it looks like there's a little area here that I missed with my stamp. Um, that's kind of discouraging, but I think once we add the pennant in there, the fill, it's not gonna show up very much. And um, um, I could also use like a black marker just to fill in that little space there. So I don't wanna quit on this and I don't really wanna take your time to do it all over again. So we're just gonna keep going with this and plug your ears on me for just a couple of minutes. Um, oh, sorry, I'm covering up the picture where I'm stamping. I'm sorry. Okay, I will make sure I move over here. Um, cover up your ears for a minute. I'm going to do the heat embossing. So this is the embossing tool that I use. Uh, this is the American Crafts brand. There are lots of different brands out there. Um, there is one that I really like from Wagner, and that's the one that I have at home. It's actually a tool that's sold at hardware stores. I'm not sure what men do with it, but apparently it's for something. I, it's a Wagner heat tool and um, it's yellow. So I can always put a link to that one as well. But there are lots of different craft brands that sell the ones that look like this as well. So I am going to heat this. So plug your ears, it might be a little loud for a minute. I'll try to hold it up close to the camera so you guys can see the um, how the embossing powder turns. So it's gonna get a glossy look to it as I heat it. Okay, so after I'm done heating, I usually take, I'm going to hold it up closer to my face here, but I usually take and kind of show it to the light so that I can see if all of my portions are glossy. Otherwise, that means I didn't heat it enough and I need to go back and heat it again. So it is all heated perfectly. Um, with that powder tool, especially if you're embossing on a colored piece of cardstock, you're going to have leftover powder on the paper. You can't really see it on the white, but after I'm finished with the embossing and the powder tool, making sure that the powder is set, it only takes about maybe 10 seconds for that powder to set. Just make sure you don't get too anxious and do this before your powder is dry. So I am going to take that clean cloth and just buff off the excess powder. Now again, you can't really see on the white cardstock, but you'll notice on the other colored cardstocks, if you're embossing on those, that um, you will have a residue left over from the powder and you just wanna get that off. 